We made a vector library, and it is specifically purposed to create trays. You can create at least 434 different trays with it to be exact, and it is completely free. We've got installation instructions for both Carveco and Vectric. Everything is set up to create trays that are easy to design and toolpath, with vectors that are ready to carve with no loops or openings, making completely frustration-free toolpathing for your vectors. Anyone can use this to design really cool catch-all trays, making the whole process as simple as it can get. Let me show you how we can make two trays in under five minutes with the new tray vector library. First and foremost, if you're looking for installation, when you download the files, we've got PDFs for both Carveco and Vectric walking you through every single step on how to get it into your program. It's incredibly simple, straightforward, and not something that I need to cover in this video. What I do need to cover is once you do have your vector libraries in place, you're gonna have graphics and you're gonna have trays. Both start with CNC with me, so they're very easy to find. And let's just go ahead and look into trays. We have all of these different tray profiles. Some of them are just different orientations in case you really don't know how to change that around. And all of this is based off of eight inch wide material. I've found over time and making different things that it is easiest to be able to get eight inch wide material. And you can find that in most every single species of wood that you're possibly gonna be making trays out of without having to laminate things together. Certainly you can have 10, 12, 16 inch wide boards, but when you start getting that wide and you're not laminating things, there is a really great chance for things to start cupping. So we've designed this entire library to be able to go off of eight inch wide boards. So bringing in one of your tray profiles is as simple as just clicking on it. And then right here, we've got our pill. And then let's go ahead and bring in one of our circular ones as well. I'll go ahead and scoot that over. And these are the two that we're gonna be using to put in our graphics. Once we've brought in our trays, we're just gonna click over to graphics. And you can see right here, we have a ton of different choices. Uh, right here, we've got a cross since Easter's coming up. We've got dinosaurs, a bunch of kid stuff. We also have a lot of things for spring, uh, like fishing. We've got lures. We've got paw prints for animal people, uh, windmills. There's a lot of different stuff. Oh, and some of them we also even have set up where you can carve the tray depending on what the actual project is. Now, if you're looking at this and then this is overwhelming for any uh, reason, if you're a CNC with me member, we have five of these trays, the one that I showed off in the beginning of this video and we'll talk about a little bit more towards the end uh, that are completely ready in Carveco and Vectric files, but this library is available to anybody regardless if you're a CNC with me member or not. So once again, coming back to this, let's go ahead and bring in, let's do a bass. That one looks pretty good. Kind of like that area. Cool. And then for our circular tray, I don't know, let's do an Easter egg. Seems to be a little bit big for this tray that we're doing. So I'm gonna bring it over and I'm just eyeballing this, but yeah, there we go. Okay. The really nice part about this entire process is every single one of these trays, depending or regardless of the type of tray that you're using or the vectors, we're gonna to be toolpathing all of them the exact same way. In this tutorial, we're gonna be going over using three bits, our bowl cut bit, a 60 degree groovy Jenny, as well as our down cut bit. And those are the only ones that we're really gonna be using and get fantastic results at the end of the day. And all of these are going to toolpath exactly the same. So we're gonna click our interior vector of our tray outlines. We're gonna go over to toolpaths and we're gonna do an area clearance. And since our material is 0.75 inches or three quarter inches, I'm going to set our depth at 0.5 inches to make sure that we have a really good base to be able to carve down into. And I'm going to be using our bowl cut bit in order to do that. I'm gonna select offset because I think it works out a little bit better. We've got our thickness. I'm gonna press calculate now. Great, uh, we are a third of the way there. Once again, go down to toolpaths, and this time I'm going to select all of our areas that we're gonna be V-bit carving. And then I'm gonna come in and put in our 60 degree groovy Jenny. And we're gonna have our start depth where we just finished off with our bowl cut bit at 0.5 inches. I'm gonna press calculate now. There we go, we've got those. And then once again, for our last one, we're just grabbing the exterior profile lines of these vectors. And we're gonna be assigning our profile toolpath outside, all that's looking good with our downtown Jenny. Once again, our feeds and speeds are already calculated in here because this is what we use for all of our CNC with me projects. So we're not really messing around with any of that at all. And we're just gonna press calculate now. There we go, and that should be cutting it out. In order to understand what we're doing, we're just gonna simulate these really quickly. And boom, it is as simple as that. We are just able to make two trays very, very quickly. All of this 
is incredibly easy to do and it's gonna come out super duper sharp just like the ones that I'm showing you right now. All of these vectors are prepared specifically to use with CNC machines. So you can carve them in a variety of V bits, but they're optimized to be used with the 60 degree Groovy Jenny. There's no huge open spots that require setting a depth limit that's gonna leave you a ton of jagged bottoms. They're just carve ready vectors, all available in the software that you're already using. So you don't have to constantly drag and drop vectors and have to find them that are saved all over your computer. So let's go ahead and cut a few of these out. As you can see, I put down a piece of walnut on my alt mill and loaded up the first of my three files to cut out these five trays. The bowl cut bit is used to hog out the material down to half of an inch depth. Uh, and its step over is really tight, so it's going to leave us a very smooth finish on the bottom of our trays and only really needs slight sanding afterwards. This also helps us get a radius on the bottom of our trays, which both looks nice and serves a very specific purpose. When you have a radius, it's much easier to get smaller items out of trays without them getting trapped into a 90 degree corner. So the whole process not only looks nice, but it's useful. Next up, we switch over to our 60 degree Groovy Jenny. And obviously any 60 degree bit will give you really great results, but we have been longtime partners with Jenny Bits. And if you're in the market to purchase some new bits, check them out and use code Hamilton to save a few bucks. All three bits we're using are available in a bundle called the HD Beginner Bits. And I'll have those linked down below if you're interested in checking them out. Lastly, we change over to our quarter inch end mill, the Downtown Jenny, and profile out all of our trays, making sure to leave bridges so that our parts stay nice in place. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know that I'm actually not a massive fan of bridges or tabs, but sometimes it just makes sense, so I used bridges here. Afterwards, I rounded over all of the edges with a 3 16th inch round over bit to soften everything and also match the radius that we used with our bowl cut bit. This really ties the whole project together by continuing specific elements into other parts of the tray. After that, I did some quick sanding with some 220 grit paper on my surf prep sander and then used some spray lacquer in a rattle can. The finish that you get with this works really great and it dries very fast, so you can easily get four or five coats in an afternoon while also sanding in between each coat. I'm a pretty big fan of this and although it is a little bit more expensive than other brands at the big box store, I find that it's just consistently giving me really great results. Even with the incredibly reserved feeds and speeds from CNC with me, I cut out all of these trays in less than two hours total. So with just minutes of design time, thanks to the tray vector library, these are very quick afternoon or weekend projects. And like I said earlier, there's at very least 432 versions of trays that you can make from this library. Uh, it really opens up a ton of possibilities to quickly design and then quickly make something. I hope that all of y'all really enjoy it and get some actual use out of it. If you do, please let me know down in the comments down below uh, about what you like about it or maybe what could be done better. Maybe some different uh, subjects that we could cover with other vectors in the future. The download link is down below and like I said, it is 100% free. We'll still have our fully toolpath version of these specific trays because that's what we do over at CNC with me. Because without y'all, none of this would be possible. I know that a lot of y'all right now are getting ramped up for your spring markets and I'm excited to see what everybody's making and how your shows go. There is a brand new challenge that's gonna be running all throughout the month of April. And it's really simple. You just need to submit your catch-all tray design. You could either use the vector library or you could do a design completely of your own and you can either cut it out or you could just render it in your CNC software and take a screenshot and post that. If you're a member of CNC with me, make sure you enter and you'll get a chance to win a $100 Jenny Big gift card. But I just want to give a massive shout out to Mitz. He's the person who's making all of this stuff happen behind the scenes. We talk a lot and I have a ton of ideas and we both do a substantial amount of work. But when it concerns things like this, the library, the instructions on how to install it and everything, that's all 100% Mitz and I am incredibly thankful. So thank you all for stopping by. I'll see you all next time. Bye.